Welcome to Presenter Media. My name is Kara Jones, and today I am going to teach you the in-depth tutorial for Microsoft PowerPoint's Insert Zoom link feature. If you're operating with Microsoft 365 or PowerPoint 2019, you have access to this powerful tool. In the background, you can see I have a PowerPoint presentation pulled up. This is one of our many templates from Presenter Media that I have uh, tweaked around a little bit to be able to use better in this presentation. Let's start by creating a Zoom so you guys can see what it actually is. We go to the Insert option on our home row and we select Zoom under the links. Now you will see three sections, Summary Zoom, Section Zoom, and Slide Zoom. First, the Summary Zoom will create a brand new slide for you and will allow you to select which sections of your presentation you would like to have displayed in this table of contents, if you will. The next thing that you'll have is the Section Zoom. Now I will say that the Section Zoom will only show up if you have sections in your project. So if we have a single section, we'll just make a bunch of blank slides here and we go to insert zoom. You see how the section zoom is grayed out? That's because we don't have any sections. To create one, you can right click and go to uh, add section and now you have two sections, which is great. And now you can go to zoom, section zoom. So basically it's asking if you wanna go to this general section here on the first slide of it or it'll have you go to a specific slide. Go ahead and close that guy. And then the last option is the slide zoom. This is where you can zoom to a specific slide anywhere in your presentation. So if we wanna just go to the final slide, click on that little guy, it's gonna put in a thumbnail of that final slide. And zooms are called links, but it's kind of, a misnomer. What I mean to say is that a link is like on this final slide, this little house. This little house is a link. When we are in this slide, so I'll just pull up the slideshow on this right here. If you click on the house, it'll take us back to slide number two. If we click on either of these two links here, and you can see by putting our mouse on them, it will move us to slide four or three, respectively. So slide three, you go back up, slide four. Awesome. That's how a hyperlink functions. It dumps you into different parts of your presentation. How a zoom functions is, now I don't understand the technical backside of it, but how it feels like it functions is it actually embeds the sections into this full slide. So as I change, so you can see we have like this light bulb here. As I change this light bulb on slide number two, take a look at that light bulb at the preview of the zoom. It changes right along with it. Now, uh, we also have what I call zoom inception, which is gonna be this section down here. And I'll show you guys how to insert that. But basically you can do a zoom of a zoom of a zoom of a zoom. Oof, that's a lot. So let's go ahead and play the presentation so you can see how this would play out. So we have our first slide of the presentation, and yes, I have closed captions turned on. When you click on that slide, it's gonna take you to section number one. Now, I'm not gonna use the hyperlinks, I'm just gonna use the scroll bar on my mouse. And once I get to the end of this section, which is right here, it's gonna automatically kick me back to that Zoom summary page. Notice how it's zooming in and out. Next, I'm gonna to go to the Morphs slide. Now, this is again embedded into that first slide. If I use my mouse scroll wheel to go down, it will go to each of the following uh, slides, and then it'll go back to that summary again. Now, if I go to Morphs and I use the hyperlink, that I put into topic A or topic B because I gave them a morph effect so that way it can insert looking all cool. It took me out of slide number two and it put me back into the regular part of the presentation, which means when I use my scroll wheel and go down, now I'm back in the regular area of my presentation. 
and what I mean by that is I use the hyperlink from this embed from the embedded actually morphs page so from this page here I use the hyperlink from topic B but that topic B kicks me over to slide number seven once I'm on the actual slide number seven when I say next it just takes me straight to slide number eight just something for you guys to be able to take a look at um, in the same thing we have the ability to zoom back and forth between slides so uh, this slide we're gonna do a slide zoom and we're just gonna go to the next slide which is zoom level 2 that's been inserted now I will say that you can take off the background if you ever want to so that's kind of fun it'll make it look transparent for you and it's the same thing as if you were um, as if you were printing it the same kind of thing would happen if you wanted to get rid of those backgrounds on your print. So I will turn the background back on just so that way it's solid and I will give it a border to help it stand out slightly. Okay so now we have a link or rather a zoom to level two and then on level two we have a zoom back to level one and you see how it's embedded now so one has two and two has one. Again, we are gonna go back to the very first slide of the project. We're gonna jump into that zoom, level two. Now that we're at level two, we go to level one. Now that we're at level one, we go to level two. And we can do this for forever and a half. But since this is all using the zoom feature, everything is still embedded in that slide. Again, this is not the same as a hyperlink. So it did not take us over to slide number nine. No, no, it kept us embedded on slide number eight. We're still slide number eight, just the embedded object. Still slide number eight, just the embedded object. Next, I'm going to show you guys how to do what I jokingly call zoom inception. The way this works is you do a zoom of a zoom of a zoom. So we're gonna go to the furthest level down, which is zoom inception three. And we're just gonna go insert zoom, slide zoom on the one right above it. So we're gonna say that one's gonna go to section three, insert. Now we're gonna go above there and we're gonna insert another zoom, slide zoom. And now we're gonna get that one to go to inception number two. That's just gonna go there. And now we're going to grab the next level up and zoom, slide zoom, section number one. Insert. And now from section number three, now that we've got all those other ones put back in, insert, zoom, slide. Go to the darkest one, which is number one. Again, everything is embedded right now. So these, I'm just going to kind of change the angles that these little guys are at. All of these, since they are still embedded, if we use them, they are not gonna take us out of the Zoom project. And uh, if you notice, on the Zoom toolbar, so you get the same thing like with shapes, you get a format text, you get a format at the top. Zoom is the same. If you have a Zoom inserted, think of it as an object, you have its own ability to control it. You can return to zoom. If you use return to zoom, that means once you get out of this slide, it's gonna take you back to this slide that it lives on. We don't wanna go back to this slide. We wanna go back to the parent slide, the black one at the very beginning, which is why we are not enabling that return to zoom on every single slide. Additionally, um, it doesn't really work so great on the inception type ones. I mean, it works, but it's not quite as, not quite as nice. Um, let's grab our team zoom here. So we're gonna insert a zoom. And it's just going to be a slide zoom that's going to take us over to, let's go from team to skills. So it's going to take us over to skills. But I don't want it to say skill, like that's not going to, that's not going to work for me. I don't want it to look like it's showing up like that. So what I can actually do is right click and I can go to change image. And I can select from file, stock images, online pictures or icons. I can just grab an icon and I said I'm going to skills. So. We'll see if we have the word skill anywhere in here. Uh, let's say craft. Um, let's say build. There we go. 
when I think of skills, I think of technical skills. So let's just grab one of these icons here. Yes, I'm being overly picky. It's a terminal condition. So now this is actually a zoom that will take us down to slide 15. And after, and so after slide 15, it will um, just continue moving on because this zoom, like the other ones, doesn't have a return. So now if I go to this slide in the presentation and I click on this guy, it's gonna take us to slide 15 and it does change it to the thumbnail for you there. But if you think of it like, instead of saying skill, if you want it to say chapter one, you can have that happen. So if you want to do something along those lines, just do insert shape. We'll make a nice little thing like that. Say chapter one. So now let's say you don't know what you want chapter one to be, right? It's you're working on a project and it could be anything. So you can actually right click and go to save this picture. This little box is now going to save as chapter one. And now we are going to insert a zoom and we're gonna go grab that same zoom for the skill. And we're gonna change that image from a file and we are gonna grab the chapter one file that we just made. So now, whatever slide you put here in, at the beginning of this chunk for right here will be your chapter one. So if you need to change the content on it, it's not gonna show you some weird preview. You're always just gonna see chapter one. When you click on it, it will change it to whatever's on that slide. Oof, that was a lot to show you guys. So now that we've gone through all the craziness of it, let's play our project one last time so you guys can remember some of the tips that I talked about. When you go into a slide on a Zoom, you are in an embedded object in that slide. If you click on hyperlinks, it's going to take you out of the Zoom and put you into the regular part of your presentation. If you stay in your Zoom, as you move through each section, it will take you back to the Zoom summary. Morphs act similar to Zoom, but they are hyperlinks. They are not embedded objects. This means if you use a morph, it will take you out of the zoom control and it will take you out of the embedded objects. So even though it may look like a zoom, it is in fact a hyperlink and will take you to the following slide and set it back to the summary slide. Zooms can go as in depth as you like and they will continue to embed as many times as you need to in a project. Finally, you have three options when you insert a zoom. Initially, you will only see a zoom summary option, which is like a table of contents or a zoom to a specific slide. If you create sections or you create a summary, that will create sections for you and you can then treat the zoom as a table of contents. I hope this was enough information to get you folks started on using the PowerPoint insert zoom functionality that they built into Microsoft 365 and PowerPoint 2019. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave a comment below, follow us on Facebook, or send us an email at support at presentermedia.com. This is Kara Jones with Presenter Media. Let's make great presentations.